place in the back if you need to take your kids. I understand that. Little nursery and little toddler room if you need to, to do that. Maris, you got your electric guitar this week, don't you? Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about uh, uh, being a blessing. Everybody say blessing. blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. Can I get an amen? We're a blessed church. We're a blessed group of people. I, I refuse to listen to the dictates of our media. Amen. As a matter of fact, I got a mask over my ear right now. Every time it comes on, I just put a little mask over my ear so I ain't got to listen. It filter out all that nonsense I keep hearing about for the last 10, 12 months. Tremendous week. You know, I went to Bishop Miller's funeral. Uh, Tony Miller was a great friend of mine. Amen. I'm just telling you, because he reached out to me, he touched base with me. Uh, Joseph watched it online said there were over 1,000 views, 1,000 people watching his funeral around the world. Some got up at 2, 3, 4 in the morning just to watch his funeral service. Uh, many of you, if you don't know who I'm talking about, he's a man who's preached in this pulpit, a man that loved his church. As a matter of fact, I would go places and people would say, Bishop Miller been to your place. He said, you got 100 Harleys that sit out in front of your church and everybody totes a gun in your church. And I thought, <laughs> he always made you feel bigger and better than what you were. And I thought, well, I hope nobody other people come here because we ain't got that many that sits out here. But I do believe there's a gun in every church Amen. person in this house. I, I never really ask questions. I just pray if anything ever happens, get down. Amen. Just get, if you ain't got a gun, get down. Amen. Because I uh, don't want to get caught no crossfire around here. Amen. And I do have security in this house. So you may not know it, but there are people that are secure and look after it and watch after the people here. Blessing. You're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Everything God has done in your life, he blesses you. I, I love the word blessing. Blessing is found all through Scripture. Matter of fact, the, the word blessed is used 516 times. Amen. In the word of God. Bless, bless, bless. When we bless our food, don't we? Amen. We pray over our food. Jesus said, more blessed to give than to receive. That blessing is that important. Blessing is a, of God is not a luck. Amen. It's not chance. It's not coincidence. People act like, well, man, what? That just happened to you? No, no, no. I'm blessed. I taught my kids a long time ago. You ain't spoiled. You favored. Come on. Amen. You're blessed because you're a part of the household of God. Can I get an amen? Amen. It's so important. Bless, blessing is prosperity. Amen. It's liberal uh, giving. Amen. It also means to kneel as an act of adoration. Man blessing God. Amen. In our worship. God blessing man. Man blessing man. Ephesians chapter 1. Are you comfortable? Amen. Just want to get you some exercise in this morning. For some of you, that's all you get the whole week. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Blessed. Blessed. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The word blessing is approval that allows or helps you to do something. Amen. It's an unction, if you would, when you're blessed to do it. I see some people that are blessed to be mechanics. They're blessed to do carpentry work. They're blessed to sing. Amen. Blessed to preach. Amen. They're blessed to do, uh, uh, you know, all type of... Uh, Oh, man, industrial stuff. I look at them, I go, I, I have no idea what they're doing there. Amen. But they're blessed to do it. Some, some, I've met mothers who were blessed to be mothers. They'll tell you that. They, they're just good at being a mom. They're just good at it. I've met some men that were fair fathers. <laughs> Amen. You don't get a book when you get a kid. Amen. They don't give you a Raising a Child 101. You'll look back on it. That's why you get them grandkids, that second chance. Can I get an amen? Amen. One more time. Help and approval from God. Something that helps you or brings you joy. When you're blessed, you got joy. I mean, it just, it, it just comes with it. You smile about it. You appreciate it. Amen. It's, it's a, just a good thing. And it's a good thing to be blessed. So I want to remind you this morning that you're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. As we move through this year, I'm not going to get into negativity. I, I've seen all the negative but I think when you come to church you ought to leave here blessed I think you've already been beat down enough all week long amen time to get blessed father thank you again for your word lord your anointing rest upon us be uh bless the people today as we bless you in Jesus name everyone shout amen, amen. good to have all of you here. good to have the turners back in the house good to see folk returning back in you know there's something about blessing the stepping of Abraham led to a perpetual blessing you know that Abraham was a friend of God amen and as a friend of God as he moved through life God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 he said the Lord had said to Abram go from your country your people and your father's household to the land I will show you God had a plan amen he had a destiny plan for a group of people he said, go to a place that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. Speaking to one man, I will bless you. I will make your name great. 
and you will be a blessing. Again, a blessing is an approval that allows or helps you to do something. Amen. Here's this man who has no idea what God has planned for him, but God said, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make you a blessing, and you're going to be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Now, I'm going to bring you into, without going into your Bible, just know this. In the book of Galatians, it says that we have been grafted in. Amen. Abraham's also our pop. Can I get an amen? Amen. We came from that, that lineage, if you would. So the blessings of Abraham are also our blessings. So if God blessed Abraham, he blessed Lucinda. And he said, whoever blesses Lucinda will be blessed. Amen. And she'll be able to be a blessing. Yeah, everybody follow where I'm going? I'm going to move very quick because I know you got your children in here. Rachel, good to see you. The purpose of blessing, to bless, to consecrate with favor or to consecrate with praises. Bless means to speak well to others about someone else. It's very important. You know, I, I, again, I talked to Pastor Michael my way here, my pastor. And he told me that Abraham Lincoln got into it with another uh, congressman. And when he got into it, uh, the, the congressman or the senator, whoever the guy was, the political figure, he, he challenged Abraham to a duel. At that time, uh, you could duel. You could go out and shoot each other. Now, I almost wish that was back today. Amen. You know, where a president could do well, Anyway, get back over here. Uh, and, and, and so, so he, he, they challenged to a duel. And, he, and Abraham said, well, I'm not going to do it. The guy's a, a, a lot smaller than I am. You could pick what you wanted, a gun or a sword. Abraham, being a tall man of 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", man decided I will use a broad sword. That way I could just reach out there and touch him, you know, if I wanted to. And he practiced, and he realized, I'm not so good at this. And if that guy gets a good shot at me, uh, it's over. Amen. So he apologized. Amen. And he learned this. And the pastor Mike said this to me. He said he would write letters about how mad he was at senators and congressmen and stuff. And then he'd put them in a drawer. And then he'd bless them. The power of a blessing turns people around. Amen. Sometimes you've got to write something down and then put it in a drawer. But don't forget to burn it later. Because they could find it after you die and find out the truth. Amen. Speak well of others. This is a great year to speak well of others. To think, instead of saying something next, say something well. To speak well to someone. Don't just think it. Speak it. Everybody say, speak it. Amen. It's a, a, tip, a typical Hebrew blessing. May God consistently do good in your life. That's how they would bless. May God continually do good in your life. Amen. That your life would be blessed. Amen. More than anything else, the purpose of a blessing was to protect you from potential harm. I don't know what's out there, but I have prayed over you and my family. Amen. That God would protect you from potential harm. You don't know what's going to happen to protect you into your, and we, we, we use the word prophetic future, which means the future God has planned for you. That you know you can choose another future. You can choose to go your own way. But God has a future plan for everybody here. And in so doing, I want God to protect you in that future, to perpetuate your purpose in the earth. In other words, when you're gone, like Larry I just spoke about, he left a legacy. He didn't know he was going to do that. But every time I look at him benches, I'm never going to forget that man. Amen. That's important. To prosper you, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Adds no sorrow with it. There's nothing like getting wealthy and not being sad about it. Amen. It's not a problem. The power of blessing, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Remember, Moses leads the children of Israel out of Egypt 40 years. He's got the 12 tribes with him. He's got Jacob's boys with him. Everybody follow me? Amen. And as they're moving for 40 years, they get close to his death. Now, Moses realizes he's not going to get in the promised land. He's not going to get there. But before he does, he blesses those children. This is what blessed me, Steve. He blessed another man's children. Sometimes we forget about the other people we're around, and we don't bless them. I want my children blessed, but you want to bless me? Bless my kids. Amen. Say something nice about my kids, even if they are rascals. Let's talk about their prophetic future. Can I get an amen? Where God's going to send them, where they're going to be. So here's what this man did. The blessing is spoken in a moment of transition. Moses is on his way out. We know that he walked with God. He was no more. Then Joshua took the people of God on into the promised land. Moses on that self-same day will peer into a possession that he himself would never inherit. He will stand on the mountain and peer into a promise that he will never enjoy. Before I pass, there may be promises that I will not get to enjoy. Amen. But my prayer is that my kids will, and my children's children, amen, and your kids will, that they'll have a blessing. You know what all of life is right now for all of us? It's hoping our kids have the kind of life that we've had. Amen. They've been blessed. My dad used to say, son, I pray life gets better for you than it was for me. 
Amen. As hard as he worked on the back of a garbage truck, amen, and for Tennessee Valley Authority, TVA, and all the things that he did, my dad changed his own flats. We had a push mower. Matter of fact, my dad raised two pushers. Hey, man, me and Jimmy, we pushed him mowers, man. We took care of the property outside. You know, and he, he brought us up that way to work and to work hard. And he wanted life to be a little bit better for us than it was for him. That's how Moses, when he looked at the people that day, he began to bless them. Everything will be new. They will march. As a matter of fact, he said, you know, the Ark of the Covenant with the presence of God inside that box. Hey, Amen. That Ark used to be in the middle. Now, when you go, I want to make sure that it's in the front and there's a space between you and the people. In other words, here's the principle. Let the presence of God lead you. Amen. Not in the middle of you, but make sure you sense the presence of God and the peace of God before you move on. So Moses releases a blessing of movement, motion, manners, mom momentum to the tribes. Jacob prophesied, the daddy of the twelve, prophesied out of a father's position. Moses blessed him because of his wilderness to walk with them through the wilderness. Amen. Here's the thing. Thing. And here's another principle for you to catch hold of. Moses blessed him because of his willingness to walk with him. For 40 years, he walked with these 12 tribes. For 40 years, he knew these 12 men and the tribes that they were over. There were over 2 million people. At the end of it, before Moses, after 40 years, goes into the promised land, he blesses them. This spoke to me. Because a lot of times in life, we have, a, we have preachers and leaders that are online trying to prophesy and pray over us that they don't believe in us. You know why? They never walked with us. They've never been with us through what we've been through. I, I mean, I guess I really, it's a frustration I got. Because of the pandemic, people started turning to online and getting their preaching. They've been getting, not just, not from me, and, uh, but from other preachers. And they act like this, I follow this preacher because he gave a prophetic word or he shared something about this. They don't know you. Hang out with people that know you. Moses knew these guys. And be honest with you, he knew that some of them were scoundrels. He knew some of them had met. You don't go 43, 40 years through life and be, have perfection. He knew of their issues. He knew of their uh, problems. He met, and yet he blessed them. Preachers trying to bless us that have never walked a day in our shoes. You know, I've received many uh, blessings uh, uh, over my life, you know, and out here said, you, you pastor, that you, know, you have no idea of the hardships that I've walked through. They mean well. carries no weight in my life. But a returning smile, the graves of friends and families we've stood over, the pain of loss, the difficulty of rebuilding after floods. But when one has endured what we have, that blessing is meaningful and sticks with you. A couple of years ago, a group called the Craftsmen for Christ, they came to us. Amen. They helped us out through Hurricane Harvey and through Hurricane Imelda. Matter of fact, Bishop Bob, I call him that. I, uh, when I first met him, people called him Bob. His, his men called him Bob. And I didn't like it. Because this man was the leader of these men. And I talked to those men. I said, y'all need to call that man pastor. Amen. So they started calling him pastor. Then I started calling him Bishop Bob. Bob the Builder. Amen. Because he reminded me that. And he just, he'd get on to me. He said, man, don't do that. And I said, quit acting. So, so you're the leader of these guys. Man, be their pastor. Let them call you pastor. Let them honor who you are, man. That's a good thing. But the reason I love Bob and those men and women that came and helped us is they went through a flood in the 90s called the Feather River that flooded Marysville and Yuba City. And they had to rebuild their churches and their homes. They had walked where we're walking. And so when they came to us, I blessed them, man. We let them shoot hogs. I let one guy shoot a deer. Amen. He was so excited. City boy shooting a deer. He was so excited. I let him shoot it right out of my truck. It wasn't at night. But it was getting dark. But it, I just wanted them to be blessed. I wanted them blessed because these people have walked where we walk. You'll find out where people have walked where you walk. It's easy to be a blessing to them. So he blessed him. Words of blessing for Moses. To Reuben, he said, live and don't die. Let your men not be a few. To Levi, he said, thou shalt put incense before thee. Speaking of the Le Levitical group that was going to be worshipers. To Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him. And the Lord shall cover him all the day long. These words meant something to these men. And to Joseph. Let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brothers. He remembered Joseph's hardships. So he said to Joseph, amen, you're going to be blessed because of that separation, that time away. And then he goes on to Judah, and he said, hear, O Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people, that his hands be sufficient for him, and thou a help for him and from his enemies. The concept here is the spoken word in relation to the significance of cursing and blessing. I can bless you by giving you something, but I can also bless you by saying something. 
And when you say something, it means something. According to Old Testament thought patterns, the spoken word had the power of its own fulfillment. Careful what you say. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's why I say be careful what you say to your kids. When you're mad at times, you want to say something to them. I hear people use the crudest and the meanest words to their kids. Don't do that. That kid will come up thinking that way. Amen. Learn how to bless your children. Can I get an amen? Amen. And be, make sure others are blessing. The word once spoken assumed its own history, almost a personality of itself. In other words, you didn't have to sign a contract. Your word was good enough. Years ago, D, I remember a guy you uh, worked with, uh, Malloy, Mark. And I became friends with you, amen, because I'd always bring the finances in, amen, from the church that I'd, I'd uh, started back in the day. And we'd be connected. And then I found out about your husband being from Alabama, and then he bought liquor from my grandparents. And, and uh, so next thing we know, we all friends again. We family. We found each other. Okay, but in doing that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you back to something. In building the first building, it was $650,000. And I walked into that office, and I met with Mark, out of relationship, and just speaking. I said, Mark, I need $650,000. And he stuck out his hand, and we shook hands. And I walked out of there, not signing a contract, but confident in my spirit that my word and his word was good enough. Now, later, because of banks, we had to sign stuff and make sure that was good. But it was the word. And that's how in the Old Testament, if you gave your word, your word was contracted. Amen. When you bless somebody, you released it. And when you cursed them, there's a difference in cussing and cursing. Hello, country. I've been cussed before. But very seldom have I been cursed. Cursing is when you want to call down something bad on somebody. Amen. Cussing sometimes is just that somebody dropped a hammer on your thumb. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. When Isaac blessed Jacob rather than Esau... He could not recall the blessing, for it existed in history. He done spoke it forth. Remember, Isaac's old. He's, he's going blind. He has two sons named Jacob and Esau. Amen. And his wife, Rachel, she wanted that baby. She, wanted the, her, she had a favorite. And because of that favorite, amen, being, being Jacob, she did something. Genesis 27, 27. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment. And he's speaking of of this young man, Jacob, but he's wearing a goat skin. And, and the daddy blessed him and said, see, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. In other words, she dressed one son like the, the other son. One son was always out in the field, and he smelled like a goat. The other boy in the house, he smelled like ivory soap. So she had to do something real quick, so she dirtied him up and threw a goat skin on him and slid him in there. Why? Because she wanted him to get his daddy's blessing. Now, these two were, they were twins, right? If I remember right. But Esau came, did, which one came out first? Esau was coming out first. But didn't Jacob grab a foot, try to pull him back? That's hilarious. <laughs> Therefore, God give thee on the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. So listen to what he said here. Dew is important because dew brings forth crops. So may your crops be blessed, and the fatness of the earth, may you be a good deer hunter, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve you, the nations bow down to you, uh, be Lord over your brethren. In other words, you're going to be the top, and let your mother's sons bow down, which would now is going to be Esau. Curse be everyone that curses you, and blessed is everyone that blesses you. Later, Jacob was known as Israel, as known as the Jews, and Esau became the father of the Muslims. Now, now we hear, ain't we? So now we got the Jews versus the Muslims. You got Jacob versus Esau. And all of them go back to who? Daddy Abraham. They all consider Abraham their father. So this is just a quick overview for some of you trying to figure out what's all going on in the Middle East. It started way back with a woman putting a goat skin on one of her boys. Amen. So it had required an identity of itself. So be careful what you say over your children. Amen. Now Esau didn't like what happened. Esau hated, Genesis 27, 41, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are about at hand, and then will I slay you. And you remember him and Esau came after Jacob. He go kill Jacob. God wrestled Jacob. Jacob apologized to Esau. They split up. They went their own way. But here's the bottom line. Isaac could not recall the blessing. Once it's said, it goes forth. Amen. He couldn't, make, he couldn't change it and go, oops, I messed up. Make sure when you bless, 
First, that you use your mouth. If you've got a mouth to say it, say it. Amen. Be a blessing to others. But realize you can't recall a blessing or a curse. Some folk going to hate you because you're blessed. Esau hated Jacob, and Jacob was blessed. Oh, he was blessed. What, what, Pastor Mike told me this morning, he said, you know Jacob found his wife at the well? Moses found his wife at the well. You'll always find somebody who loves you whenever they giving in and taking out. Amen. Drawing water into your life and giving you water and being a blessing to you. Amen. Those are the ones you're looking for. There's a difference, again, in cursing and blessing. Be careful. So the priority is in the voice. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. That voice to call aloud, to claim, to proclaim. A generation, this, this generation is intrigued with voices. You notice that? I don't do a whole lot of surfing. My wife got on this thing called TikTok. I don't even know where she found it. But she made me listen to this girl who changes up songs. And I thought, that girl is incredible. She's really good. But we're intrigued with voices. You know, we, our, our shows are about the voice and, and about uh, American Idol, all these things. It's something about voice. We, the, the voice is so powerful to hear a voice. The voice is a sound produced and uttered through the mouth as speech or song, an instrument or medium or expression. A while ago, I'm back here in this room, and David, your kids are back here, and all of a sudden, Joshy, the littlest one, grabs a microphone, and he starts singing in the microphone. As soon as he saw the mic, he knew what it was for. He starts singing, and he starts singing, da 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 he used his voice. All of a sudden, J.J. grabs up a mic, and she starts singing. Praise a hallelujah. Da -da 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 -da. Praise a hallelujah. Batman. <laughs> I'm listening to the voices back there. Man, catch, and, and, and it blessed me to hear it. To voice is the right of expression. He, to voice an opinion, to have a voice, amen, an influential power. Everyone can have an opinion about your life, but not everyone should have influence in your life. Don't let everybody be a voice in your life. Just because somebody wants to come up and say, hey, I got, a, I got a word for you. Be careful. If you don't have relationship with those people, be careful of the voices in your life. Amen. Watch out for that. You know, we have what is called voice activation. You, I, D, I just saw you hold up your phone. You know, there's a little button on your phone you can touch, and you can say something. And it would call me. It's voice activated. It's amazing. You, you can text while talk. Uh, you can talk into your phone, and it'll text for you. I don't recommend it. Particularly if you're country. <laughs> if you're country, that, that thing in your phone don't pick up exactly what I mean, ain't saying what I'm saying. And you'll be apologizing for a long time. Amen. It's better just to call them. Amen. We've come a long way since the clap on, clap off. Can I get an amen? Amen. Then there's voice recognition where something recognizes your voice. They hear your voice and they recognize it. Do you know I have people's voices on my phone who have passed away? I have not erase their voice i want to hear their voice again amen bishop miller was one of those i i, I during the memorial service they had him speak his and this is this has always been in my heart i've always wanted to preach my own funeral i just didn't know i've always wanted god to give me a heads up <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i'd know before so you could just throw it up there and it would be easier on everybody at least part of it some of it so Bishop Miller preached some of his own funeral. He had preached things about uh, going to heaven and being in the kingdom before he died. And they played that. And I'm listening and to hear his voice. And that, you know, what I did not get to hear him say was, I can't get no help over here. I, I didn't get to hear him say that. But I'll never forget him saying things like that. Your voice is so important when you bless others. To hear the voice of Again, Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus, what did he say when he what? Heard. Amen, that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. 
But he cried the more and the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I'm going to tell you, there's something about hungry people. There's something about hungry people that get filled. They just won't shut up. And they're going to keep using their voice till God hears them. And Jesus, a great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. And, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calls you. And casting away his garment, which is important, he rose, he came to Jesus. Jesus answered and said unto him, what is it that you want? I read that and I thought to myself, it's obvious what I want. First, all you said, son, was have mercy. You didn't say, give me my sight. You said, have mercy. Amen. So mercy, and a matter of fact, in the correct translation in the Greek, it says, mercy, have mercy. He called Jesus mercy. Mercy, have mercy. I know you're merciful. I know who you are. Listen to my voice. Amen. I know it's you, Jesus. So Jesus said to him, what is it that you are? It's obvious. There are times that it is obvious what I need. But God wants me to voice it. He wants me to say it. I need this. I need that. I need to share with you my burden, what I feel. I want you to hear what I've got to say here. The blind man said unto the Lord that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith, man, made you whole. Your voice. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And when he heard Jesus, faith welled up inside of him. There was hope, but not just hope. There's mercy around here. So I'm not going to shut up till I get hold of it. Mercy, have mercy. And Jesus said, go thy way, be healed. And immediately he received his sight. And what did he do? He turned around and followed Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Follow mercy everywhere you go. Amen. Hang out. Surely goodness and mercy. Hang out with mercy to bless you can. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus was saying what Christ recognized. Amen. He's the son of David. Have mercy. Hallelujah. He was proclaiming with his voice. He was asking for it. He wanted a blessing. So you got to proclaim. First, you got to claim it. Everybody say claim it. See, I believe sometimes in claiming things. Amen. Believe in God for it. Now, I'm not uh, one of these crazy guys that's just uh, claiming everything. But there are things that I believe God wanted me to have a long time ago. Twelve years old, I had a $20 motorcycle. And I rode that bike until the wheels about came off of it. I've always loved scooters. So I remember putting a Harley up in my office, a little, little, little bitty model. I'd pray over that thing. Amen. I claimed that bike. And God blessed me with bikes. And I've blessed others with bikes. I've had models of hot rods, almost all of them Dodges. And God has blessed me with Dodges. They're things that I claim. Be careful what you want to claim. Amen? Amen. But what well, watches to claim means to demand as a right for what is due. To demand, ask for, or take one's own or as, as due. Claim as a reward. Amen. To claim one's luggage at an airport. Hey, that's mine. Don't, don't touch. That's my bag. Then to proclaim means to declare publicly. Typically, this morning worship was in here was off the cuff. I mean, when I ain't not, I'm not, not a lot of you, when I got up here and I felt like there was a thousand people in this house. Amen. The angels must have joined in because I know some of you weren't real loud. You're getting better all the time. Amen. But to proclaim is very important. Amen. To be insistent, proud. Amen. To announce, to give an uh, outward indication of. Uh, amen. To say something. This is in our worship, our praise, our glorify. Come on, Joseph. Amen. To glorify openly or publicly. We bless the Lord. And that's an amazing thought, that I can bless him. How can I bless you? By giving you my life. Amen. All that I have, I bless you. We use the phrase all the time. He tells us, blessed is he. Uh, all through Scripture, Jesus gave the Beatitudes. Blessed are they that, that mourn, those the peacemakers, they uh, hunger and thirst. Amen. Blessed are the meek. He talked about the blessings, amen, that, uh, that these attitudes have in our life. We are blessed. You, you, you've got to look back at Psalm 103 tells us to consider our blessings. Amen. Count your blessings. Sometimes we forget how blessed we are. You're going home in a fine vehicle, most of you. Sitting in a house, air conditioned. Blessed. Got heat in it. I, I, I come through my house all the time. My kids in there. And they'll have that heater on. At night. And I go through and I punch that thing down. They get up in the morning and go, why are you punch that thing down? I said, 
put on more cover. And then I go back and remind him how I come up with one heater in the house, one electric heater in the house that you straddled in the morning. One of them had them had the, like a, a tower of heaters and heat on both sides. And you come in, you straddle that thing real careful. And you heat up in the morning. Amen. Then three kids, you rotated through that thing. You cold at night, you put cover on. You warm at night, you take cover off. Amen. I remind myself how blessed I am. And my daughter said to me the other day, she said, well, at least we can turn it up, though, you know, to make it a little warmer in the house. I said, I know we can. Put on more cover. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's just important. So, it, it, to proclaim, we're blessed. First Peter 2, 9. And I close. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. You realize how blessed you are? God chose you. When you accepted him, you are part of the chosen. Amen. Chosen. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. So God made a nation out of a man named Abraham. But when Jesus died on the cross and his blood flowed, he made a nation out of us. A nation of believers. All type of ethnicity. Cultures. He made us all one nation. Amen. We all look a little different. You know, a lot of times when you see a nation, they all kind of look alike. But when you see the kingdom nation, we're all kind of a blended mess, ain't we? That's why I love misfits. That you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness. He pulled you out of dark places and into his marvelous light. He said you should show forth. You should proclaim. You should claim. You should be a blessing and bless him. We're blessed to be a blessing. Amen. You can make a statement by being silent, but you can't call aloud a blessing without a proclamation. Amen. I can sit there and be quiet. That may say something to some, but when I open my mouth, I bless. Amen. You got to learn to use your voice more effectively. In this house, this tribe, this nation, we bless him and others. We do bless him. We do bless each other with our voices. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for the challenge today to be a blessing to others. To bless because we've been blessed. Lord, I know I can't, I can't bless unless I have been blessed. I look back and realize I'm blessed. Blessed man. Lead a blessed church. So God, I pray that there'll be a change in attitude and all that we are. And we look back over our days. And Lord, we know that something's going to take us out and put us into the kingdom. We realize that. But until that day comes, we bless to be a blessing. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise in here. Yeah. Say this with me. Mercy. mercy. Have mercy. mercy. I love mercy. I love mercy and grace. Amen. Mercy. Mercy. Follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Then in front of you is your tithe and offering envelope. Now, I'm going to mention this to you just as a way of pastoring you. There's been a lot of pull for offerings and things like that. And we'll be till Jesus comes. We got to get the, a new live stream. I had somebody send me a message because they watch us uh, in New Mexico live stream. How much this means to them. They're able to connect with us. So we're going to get a new one. I mentioned last week. That somebody said, Pastor, I'll give $500 toward it. I'm giving $500 toward it. It's thousands of dollars. But the very first thing that you've got to learn is if possible, if you can get this into your heart, is the principle of tithing. Tithe first. Learn how to be a tither. And then on top of that, offering. But I believe it's better to be a tither. If you never give an offering, make sure you learn to be a tither. Amen. Because with that, we'll have the finances eventually to purchase the things that we need. You know that we put a new floor in, in here. We got a new walkway cover out at the other campus. Uh, David found a two-inch line busted out. I mean, it flooded the back end of the property. And by the time we found it, you know, you know that it's just there's always something to fix. There'll always be something to fix. Amen. Maintenance is huge. But don't tell, we got that fixed. But that happens. That's just life on the ranch. Amen. If you got any kind of property, you know what I'm talking about. But we ask that you 
give toward the live stream if you can. But first be a tither, then learn how to give offerings. And as David prepares to come up here this Tuesday night, my friend Doug Pittman will be with us. Now, if you remember this guy, he's an orator. He's a preaching machine. Now, Doug and I go way back. I preached youth camps for his grandpa down in Georgia before he passed away. Doug and I went to college together. Um, we've, uh, we've done some crazy stuff together back in college. That's any college boys would do. Amen. May share on that on Tuesday night. But Doug is a missionary to the European nations, Hungary, Germany, and they're closed down. You know, you think we've gone through stuff. They are shutting down. So he's going to share some of those stories, but he's also going to come here to preach on Tuesday night and Wednesday night. So I need you to show up Tuesday night. Amen. I don't want him to walk into an empty building. So if you're able, and a service will start at 7 o'clock, 7. Everybody say 7. Amen. We've backed it all up at 7 because we know the kids are back in school now, and we just want to be at 7 here in Crosby and in New Caney. Amen. And then men, how many of you men think you could show up and meet me in New Caney, 8 o'clock Saturday morning for a men's breakfast and roundtable meeting. Lift your hand, men, if you can do that. I'm trying to get as many men as I can out there. And then we're going to go into the tabernacle, and we're going to sit on them benches that Larry rebuilt. Amen. We're going to honor what this man did. He's so proud of them benches, man. Amen. And he should be. He poured us. And people would show up. I, I know of a, a lady with two little girls. She would show up and bring him lunch. And then he let them little girls drill holes and, and do things to the benches. I've seen video of it already. And one of the little girls bought him a teddy bear and a card and put it on the desk the day before he passed. And so the mother came back in this week and she took that teddy bear and she said, I'm giving it to my daughter. And we're calling it Larry Bear. Amen. So she'll always remember Brother Larry. Amen. David, if you come on up. Y'all give David a hand as he comes. <laughs> Amen. He said, give me a hand. All I got to do is read off a thing. I think we should give Pastor a hand. Amen. <laughs> I think I got the easy to end of that deal for sure. February 2nd and 3rd, again, we're going to have a midweek, first week midweek um, uh, this week on Tuesday and Wednesday, February the 6th, the roundtable meeting. February the 7th, the closing ministry and the food pantry will be open. That's the first Sunday of the month. Um, and January 14th, there will be a swap meeting. It's the second Sunday every month. See Linda and Ken. I don't see them here today. In February. It says January 14th, but it's February 14th, I'm sure. I'm sure that meant February 14th. Yeah, that's okay. It happens. February the 14th, there will be a swap meeting here. If the riches were here, they would be able to correct me on that. But I'm going to go ahead and say that it's going to be uh, January the 14th. Or February the 14th. See, that's what happens when it's wrong on the paper. You can't work that out. You can't You can't overcome something. But uh, I, like Pastor said, continue to give, continue to be a part of this house. There's a lot of uh, projects going. But at the same time, uh, again, and I can't emphasize this enough, giving isn't for the house is for you when when god when you give it says that it's pressed down shaking together and overflowing so when you give it's pressed down shaking together and overflowing in the house but it's also in your life and we want to see you guys blessed amen again next week is pastor's birthday so if it's if you're able bless that man he does so much for us he is always caring for us doing things that are above and beyond being quote unquote pastor you know, there's so many hats that he has to put on. Bless him. Bring notes. Drop them in the offering buckets at the end of the day. Um, just let him know how much we care about him. Let him know how much we appreciate him. It means a lot. In those times that you get down, you look back on some of those notes and you're like, okay, that's why I do this. And so those things, you never know when your words of encouragement might encourage him. Keep on going. Keep doing what he does. Amen. Today, we're believing God for... Jobs and better jobs, more money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. I bless you guys this week. 
Like Pastor said, there's, there's power of life and death in the tongue. I just pray blessing over the little country church and to everybody in the building and online that you guys will be blessed everywhere you go this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Get your kids.